Hey guys, my name is Derek. I'm a Volkswagen Research and Development Engineer here at ECS Tuning, and today I'd like to cover wheel spacers with you. To start, we have our hubless spacers, which cover the 3mm to 8mm range. We have our hub spacers, which cover the 10mm to 20mm range. And we also have our adapters, which cover 20mm to 30mm. First, I want to cover our 10mm and 12.5mm spacers. All of our wheel spacers are designed around OE wheels and wheel hubs. The biggest issue we have with 10mm spacers is that the front face does not seat on the wheel pad all the way. You'll see that I'm able to rock this 10mm spacer back and forth. That's because it's not seated all the way. Whereas, if I grab a 12mm spacer, it seats all the way on the wheel pad. This is mainly due to the chamfer on this aftermarket wheel and the chamfer on our wheel spacer. You'll see with the 10mm spacer on the OE wheel, it seats all the way up against the wheel pad. This is because the chamfer on the OE wheel is much larger than the chamfer on the aftermarket wheel. So one of the chamfers I want to go over is this chamfer you see here on all these spacers. So the biggest issue is the step height between the front surface of the spacer and the start of the chamfer. You'll see this step height is larger on the 10 millimeter spacers than it is on the 12 and a halfs, which is larger than the 15. This will cause interference issues with some aftermarket wheels. So please make sure to check your spacer fitment to your wheels before torquing your wheels down to your car. Now we're gonna cover the most common issue we run into with our hubless spacers. As you can see with this eight millimeter spacer installed, we only have about four millimeters of the hub protruding. This can cause some centering issues when you put your wheel on. So it's really critical to install your wheel correctly and torque it in the right sequence. We're gonna make sure our hub and our pad are clean of most corrosion. Next, we're gonna apply a tiny bit of anti-seize and spread it all the way around the hub. Now, we're gonna insert our wheel hanger. Again, you don't need one of these, but they sure make the job easier. Now, we can install the spacer. install the spacer so it's sitting all the way up against the rotor. Give the spacer a little shake to make sure it's seated fully. So we're going to take a protect the socket without a ratchet and start threading in our lug bolts. Once we've installed some of our lug bolts, we can now take the wheel hanger out. We want to take our wrench and tighten the lug bolts while they're up in the air. This is not our final torquing sequence. We're just doing this to ensure all the lug bolts are fully seated and the wheel is not loose. Make sure the vehicle is just touching the ground before proceeding with your final torquing sequence. Make sure you look up your torque spec for the specific application before proceeding with the final torquing sequence. Torque in a star pattern. One final tech tip. If you have any vibrations in your wheels, the wheel spacer is going to effectively increase your lever arm, so it's going to amplify those vibrations. All right, that's a wrap for today, guys. Hopefully this helps you with your future wheel spacer purchase or install. If you have any questions at all, feel free to give our customer service team a call.